What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Summer Career Mode, hope you're doing well, it is episode number 21, returns today with 3 wins and a draw in our last 4 games, right now at the halfway stage, we are currently 12 clear of the bottom 3, sitting in 12th place, but of course long way to go. Uh, today we're going to get through all of the January window, so more games in the league, plus our FA Cup third round tie at home to Chelsea as well, and on the back of Lenny Lobato who has just left to Everton as well, we, we do have a little bit of money to work with it's around seven million pounds uh, in the initial budget, but actually, I, no, no, it's not. It's about six million pounds. Sorry, six million pounds. Yeah, the, the fee was 7.5 mil. Of course, the board skim a bit off the top. How can I forget? 6.5 mil to work with, but with wage budget considerations, mainly about six. We might make a signing. We might not. I guess we'll see. And to start today's stuff, we've got three more scouting updates. So let's see what we got from England. We'll continue scouting on these four players here. And from Portugal, we will keep scouting these four players here. I must say, Alfonso Rodriguez looks very good indeed and already 64 to 74 is a passing range I very rarely find good passes of the ball uh, do you know I'm going to give him an academy deal I'll do scout on the fees three players for now and from Scotland I must say this guy's aesthetic look at this guy man proper Highland warrior him Duncan Patterson imagine looking like that at 15 years old Jesus <laughs> You love to see it. He started looks maxing early. But uh, for you and Sim, I'm going to give him a, uh, a scholarship as well. 60, 72 overall already. And again, just 15. You can't get 15 years old. You know, we've been seeing so many updates for the new FC 25. I'm really looking forward to it. Lots of work appears to have been done on youth scouting, the amount of countries that are available. As I said before, my main concern is about the name pool. But as for the aesthetic of players, I do know that's changing a little bit as well. We'll have to see if they become a bit more realistic or whether players still look like 40 year olds when they're 15 even so great looking academy now i must say i love how so many players are 15 so they won't ask for a pro deal during the season but this guy tyler shaw looks unbelievable as a natural central midfielder i must say even the high low work rates i'd i quite like to get those defensive stats up here i can see this guy becoming a box to box with these stats here uh, or the astounder would need to be improved upon. Um, but yeah, this, this young goalkeeper too is 70 kicking already. Obviously, with our, our current goalkeeper, Bennett, the American, I doubt he'll be able to take his place, but as a backup, he could certainly challenge at least. And as we turn down this bid from the Foxes for Harvey Nibs, I want him to stay here till retirement, man. Love him. Let's jump into our first game today. No losses in our last four. Three wins in our last four. And now heading to West London to take on Brentford. Aim to keep our unbeaten run going and staying clear of the bottom three. The bees away to G-Tech, our first game today. Come on, you guys. Yeah, excellent run this from Reading, really, really good. Can't make changes to this one here, though, due to fitness reasons, as Bennett makes a good stop at the near post to deny San Abria. Bennett, man, I, I said this before, but like he's 72 rated, but his shot-stopping ability is, oh, once again, right on cue. So good. His reactions are fantastic, man. And it's why I often say that the overall is important. What's most important is how the player performs for you. Still 0-0. A couple of great stops by the American. De Silva looking for space to turn and get away. Back to Baptiste and Sheldon. To Sanabria. Savage is there. And it's not exactly the most... Oh, well. <laughs> convincing. But uh, hey, it works, man. Threading the needle and then some, man. Bennett just not wanting to hoof it. He says, no, 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 I back my kicking. I'll tell you, as a, as a young goalkeeper, I'm so, so, so impressed. So far, man. It's so cool how the last two saves, I've had two Youth Academy goalkeepers being really solid. Third, third in a row, man. Ben, it's the real deal. That's a cracking ball. Jensen. Cross here's great delivery, and oh, Bennett once again, masterclass from the American today. Well, it is back-to-back -back games without a win, but back-to-back -back clean sheets and no losses in five as well. I said every now and then, like, you just need to take a point, especially when you haven't played well and call it a good result. This is one of those games. What do you always say? Win's good, loss is bad, draw subjective. This is a decent draw. I'll take it. Man, Bennett is unbelievable, honestly. Up to the 72 overall. We've got that showing great potential tag. Nine clean sheets in 20. And this is what I mean about defensive players and goalkeepers as well having like a ridiculously low average rating. As things stand right now, he's on course to win the Golden Glove. He's been phenomenal. And yet, 
He's got an average rating of 6.09. How? It's ridiculous, man. EA is so critical on the goalkeepers. But for those that are curious on the uh, the young players developing right now on loan, I do a quick loan report for you now. January's here. Patrick Oakley's grown eight out on loan with the overall spike. Bishop's only grown two at the Rico, but Anderson, who I'm really keen on, has grown six with St. Pauli right now. I just checked as well in the Bundesliga, the bottom with one win. I love that, man. The kid is really going through it in Germany. But what do we always say? You learn so much more from your losses than you do from your wins. This experience, Anderson, is teaching him a lot, man. And what I really like about him, too, is that CM, you look at the stats here, he, he's not a CM. He'll be wasted playing deeper. So when he does come back, either in the summer or at the end of uh, next season, I think, I'm actually going to bring him back early in... Uh, in this upcoming summer. But when he comes back, I'm going to convert him to CAM and he'll have an overall spike because that's his best position. But yeah, when he comes back, he'll be ready to battle with Harvey Nibs as our starting CAM. But this experience right now, rock bottom of the Bundesliga, is teaching him a lot, man. Mentz has grown two at Carrow Road. Davies has grown seven out on loan in the MLS. As for Johnson, he's grown four in Romania. And as this Polish side, I want to take Kamara. So to be honest, I might as well just keep the squad as it is until the end of the season. Because we haven't got much depth anyway. And as I often say, that kind of money, it's not it's not really going to do much for you. So you might as well just keep the player for the squad depth if you've got a very little amount of it. Right, following game. Uh, Chelsea at home at the Medeski FA Cup third round. We haven't had a proper cup run since this save began. And I don't think we're going to have one this year either. The Blues coming to the Medeski. I'll give it a go. Strong lineup out there. But definitely big underdogs for it. Come on, you Royals. Yeah, there's something about losing consistently, repetitively, over and over and over again. Either makes you or breaks you. It either builds up your resilience to a ridiculous level to the point where afterwards you feel like you can handle everything because you've handled the worst of the worst. Or it just absolutely crushes you and demoralizes you. And you just feel as though... There is no chance of you being successful when all you've known is failure. And it's going to be interesting to see what kind of player we get back there from what is a, uh, a an awful St. Pauli side right now, bottom of the Bundesliga. Those kind of storylines, man, you know, I say it all the time. When, pe when people ask me, Doxy boy, how do I get more immersed in the save? How do I make the save come to life? It's how you do it. It's how you do it, man. You, you create those kind of storylines throughout your save. And that's the one we're getting with Anderson right now, out on loan in Germany. There's Nabil Fakir, looks for space to shoot and drills it in bottom corner. Chelsea in front early. Yeah, got a, got a strong lineup out there for the most part. Although I have got Kanai between the sticks as our cut goalkeeper. Ch chance of going through today, small regardless though. Just We're not at this level yet, quite frankly. Half an hour to go. Still technically in this, but it's one of those games where it doesn't feel like you are, even though you're only one goal down. I haven't created a chance yet. Oh, Bukhari, wonderful turn. And just couldn't get the ball through. Yeah, my passing in this game has just been shocking. That's why we haven't created anything. Can't. These are the games where it's like, oh, boys, come on, what a save, and Bond <laughs> carries the ball over his goal line as Reggie scores at the wrong end. And I think that will go down as an own goal. Sterling's claiming it, but I think it'll be a Reggie own goal. Yeah, it's one of those games where you look at the scoreline. If you haven't scored, sometimes it can be easy to, to look at the striker and say, well, where was he? But if you're not getting the service, what can he do? Sterling shot as well, saved by Kanaya, but as there was several players going towards it on the goal line. Reggie, the man first to it, but couldn't hook it away. Own goal from Bond. And I think that is probably going to do it this afternoon. Chelsea heading through to the fourth round. Winning run, or I should say our unbeaten run, is going to be ended today as Nabil Fakir bags his brace and puts the icing on the cake as Chelsea will go through to the fourth round of a 3 0 victory. Yeah, strong ish lineup out there, but I didn't really expect us going through and pulling off our first scalper to save. Anyway, if you don't count the win against Newcastle, just not at this level yet, man. Not at this level yet. We, we, we get it. Oh, Charlie's just pulled up, man. It's compiled a misery of an afternoon here in Berkshire. Just not at this level yet, man. It's an RTG. Work in progress, man. You got to go through these tough times like Wilhelmer in Germany right now. But our progress ends at the first hurdle in the cup. Out by Chelsea. You know, I have been wondering on 
on the back of what was that unbeaten run if there was an outside shot of sneaking into the top seven in Reading's debut year in the Premier League they actually finished in eighth place only one spot behind I think that defeat to Chelsea has let's just say brought me back down to earth with a bang I'm not even thinking about it man just get enough points to stay up that's the main goal right following game Brighton away on the south coast aiming to bounce back here come on you Royals Oof. Gruff. Time to get back in the gym, son. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, if you if you lose a uh, battle of strength when you're charging with force, that tells you all you need to know. As Torres drills in the opener and Brighton go in front. The Bulgarian sent tumbling when it should have been the other way around. But it's the Spaniard with the opener. And we've got to be careful now. We've got to be careful. No wins in our last three heading into this one. And if we do lose this, back-to-back -back losses, no wins in four. And after a mini run, starting to slow down. I had the very slight belief that a top 10 finish could have been possible. In this run of form, we'll be dragged into a relegation scrap. Got to be careful here. Half your winning sum. Come on, one last chance, one last chance. Don't really deserve a point, but you know I'll take it. Espria pegs it back. Niv takes his time and miskicks it. Final chance for us to salvage an undeserved point. And Harvey just couldn't keep his composure. Not for the first time this season in a late game situation. Just couldn't direct it goal bound. Brighton hang on for the three points. No wins in six in all competitions. Back to back losses and no goals in four. No doubt about it. Reading really slowing down. Thing is though, like, I've got to remember this is our first season in the top flight, man. Like, come on. It's fine. It's all right. Like, we're, we're in 12th place. Like, if you'd offered me 12th place coming the end of the season, I would have bitten your hand off to take it, man. So relax. It's all good. It's all good. So that, that, that's it for fixtures in January then. Our next one comes away at Turf Moor. So we, we've now got to decide, do we want to make, as a big comes from Ukiah here, do we want to make transfers um, or just save the money for next season? Ukiah, of course, signed about 12 months ago. The Hatters want to take him. He is more of a championship level player. I'm not actually against cashing in, to be fair. Um, and then possibly looking to, to reinvest and bring someone in. I'm not against that. I like Mukairi, don't get me wrong, but he's barely played for us this season in the top tier. And to be fair, he was a backup winger on in the championship last season. So I'd say this is his level, to be fair, second tier. If we can get around 3.5 to 3 and 3 quarters, I'd take that. Because I'd take our budget up to around 10 million. It's quite a lot to ask for. But Luton say, yeah, 3 and 3 quarter million. And he's on his way to uh, Kenilworth Road. I'll take that. In the first season, he was on loan with us in League One. And he was phenomenal in our title winning season. Last year, we brought him back permanently in January. And he only scored a couple of goals in the championship. Wasn't great. And this year, barely featured at all in the Premier League. We said it before, though. It's okay to know when you're not quite at the level of the very best. It's all right to take a step back. And that's what Mukairo will be doing. Dropping back down to the championship. And he's on his way to Kenilworth Road. Thanks to the service since season one, Paul as he's off to Luton for three and three quarter mil. So we'll make a nice little profit in 12 months. So our budget now ri uh, now rise to just over nine mil. And I I've got a few names on the shortlist. And I think on the back of him and Lobato going in the same window, we should look for a new backup winger. And as a big comes in from Benge as well, totally fine letting go of him. He's barely featured this season at all. But for now, I'm going to keep him as our fourth choice centre half, just in case we have an injury crisis. So yeah, de deadline day is here. And again, nine mil to work with, with wage budget considerations, maybe more about eight and a half million, but pl plenty of cash to bring in a squad winger. Personally as well, I know we've got Johnston who's come in for the bench, but I actually think he's better through the middle, despite the pace. His technical ability to me, I think he's probably better as a CAM, in my opinion, but I, I, I still wouldn't mind someone that could be a, uh, a CAM or a winger, That's, or, or possibly a backup striker. One of the three, I'd say. New winger, new CAM, or new striker. And I do have a target in mind, but unfortunately, I can't bring him in because it's one of those issues where the player is playing for a club with not enough squad depth in that area. That is Kwame Poku right now in League One with Peterborough United. Excellent pace and agility. And that is so important to me as an inside forward. So we'll have to keep him there at London Road, but... One player I'm quite keen on, and I've never used him before, but I know he has been recommended to me a lot, is this guy. Right now playing for Middlesbrough, it is Riley McGree. 
with the Burra. He's pacey, he's got agility and great stamina as well, plus some good technical ability too. And I was saying now, I was looking for a, possibly a new winger, a new CAM or a new striker. Well, really, this guy can play in all three positions with that technical ability as well. 27 years old now, granted, no spring chicken, but it's 76 overall, more than good enough to make an impact in the Premier League. And for the first time ever using him, I'd like to give him a go. I know I've got a lot of Australian fans, so I'd love to sign an Australian player for the first time in a while. We see how good Binden is from New Zealand. Now let's bring in the Aussie. Yep, several caps for Australia. Obviously had a, uh, a loan spell at Birmingham City before going to uh, Middlesbrough at the Riverside. And again, when you look at his stats as well, one thing I really like about this guy is that versatility. There's no reason why he couldn't play as a striker in place of Bukhari. You know that Kelvin hasn't scored all season long, so McGree could fill in there up top if we asked him to. Again, he could definitely play through the middle or again on that wing as well with the inside forward ability so we're gonna have enough for this we might it needs to be close to valuation though seven mil well there we go seven <laughs> Seven mil was the starter offer. In the end, I probably could have got him under the valuation. Still, I'll take it. Seven mil from agree. Yeah, this must be the first time I've signed an Australian player in FC24. I can't think of another player that I might have brought in, but considering the success of Tyler Binden, the New Zealand centre after we inherited, I'm hoping this guy from Oceania will be just as good. Yeah, he's bounced around a little bit. Going to Middlesbrough now, and it seems like he's found a home from the Riverside Stadium in the save. Now going to the Medeski and getting his first taste of top-tier football in the Premier League. I'm really excited to give him a go for the first time ever. I know he's been recommended to me quite a bit by my Australian fans, and now I've got him here with Reading. Welcome to the Medeski Stadium, Riley McGree. Yeah, 27 years old, so in the prime of his career right now, could still get a little bit better, although he probably won't get much higher than I'd say. Again, the high 70s, possibly 80 an absolute stretch. What I love is the fact that you look at his stats here, he can defend as well. And you know that's important to me on the flanks especially too. So what I'm going to do is try and get that defensive work rate up to high as well. Because going forward, I've got no qualms, man. He's got pace, he's got agility, he's got balance, and he can finish as well. But yeah, defensively, if I can turn this guy into a really good two-way player, this is going to be an excellent, excellent player either starting or coming off the bench. And uh, with our budget now dropping to 1.6 mil, that'll do it for transfer. Transfers on deadline day as Mukairo leaves and McGree replaces him. And the top deals in the end were, wow, Mac Allister joining a Fletico of 74.9 mil. Can I just say, what a window of Fletico Madrid are having, man. It's Gonzalo Ramos joins Leverkusen and Luis Diaz joins Bayern Munich. But what what a window of Fletico are having. Julian Alvarez, fantastic pickup. Obviously, I know there's a lot of uh, controversy regarding Conor Gallagher by the time I've... Uh, I've recorded this commentary. I don't know whether he's gone there or not, but we'll see. But anyway, great window of Fletico having, man, and it's good to see it. But anyway, a big comes in for Nibs. Luton want to take him alongside Mukairu, but absolutely not, Rob. You've already got Paul. You're not taking Harvey as well. we now got three more scouting updates to see what we got. We're from England. We'll continue to scouting on these four players here. Freddie Scott has got a fantastic overall, and if that potential doesn't drop, we've got another gem on our hands. We'll do one more month of scouting, though. And from Portugal, we'll continue scouting these three players here. And from Scotland, we'll continue to scout Duncan Patterson. This dude looks as though he's been chopping wood in the Scottish Highlands since the age of six, man. <laughs> it's a ridiculous aesthetic. <laughs> and uh, and this goalkeeper as well. So not making the academy for now, but right now we've got seven players in there. Uh, sorry, six even. And these are the creme de la creme for now. Although I might reject Anderson. I know he's got a good starting overall, and the potential's fine as well, but again, creme de la creme, man, sticking to that strategy, and we've got a better Anderson right now on loan at St. Pauli as well, but the best of the bunch, definitely Tyler Shaw, 15 years old, but already 89 to 94 potential. This dude looks absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. I'll keep you posted on his development during the year. Right, back to business. Bottom place, Burnley away at Turf Moor and a golden chance to get back to winning ways to take on the Clarets with no wins in our last four games. So return to winning ways here. Come on, you Royals. And these are the games that have just got nil-nil written all over it. Two teams low on confidence, both in really poor form. Yeah, don't, don't expect fireworks in this one, man. This is going to be a scrappy one. I can already tell as Bennett makes the save. And Reggie gets it away. Yeah, this has got this is genuinely one of those games where it's like you, you you look at the fixture and you think, yeah, what else is on TV? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's not it's not one 
It's got the most amount of quality in it. Yeah, even the football purists would understand if you'd rather watch a rerun of Grey's Anatomy than uh, put this one on because this is a, a game between two teams that again came up last season, both in uh, both in poor form, both really struggling in this recent run. And uh, oh my goodness, not really. Oh, Bennett once again. Not much on uh, on display in terms of quality, but our number one with two really good saves either side of half time to keep it at 0 0. And if you've got to grind out the point, then grind out the point. Bennett understands the assignment, not for the first time today. Reading's poor run continues. It is five games without a goal. They have clearly dried up and also five without a win, of course, as well. The point stops Burnley gaining momentum to pull out of the bottom three, but if we don't start winning soon, we're going to get dragged back into a relegation squad. Grab. Join to pick up a win from somewhere, man. This is a terrible run. Thing is, though, we're 14 points clear of a far better goal difference in the bottom three as well. So, I mean, you know, 16 games to go. Anything can happen. Don't get me wrong. But really, with how bad the bottom three have been, I think all we're going to need now is two wins in 16. And that will probably end up being enough for us. So, let's get one of those two or possibly three wins needed to make sure we can survive this year. Following Conte, we get back to winning ways after none in five. Crystal Palace out of the Medeski. Come on, you Royals. Yeah, that's the thing. Like sometimes it's not it's not as bad as it may appear. You know, when you're really going through the thick of it, sometimes it can be hard to. Uh... Oh, ball, Reggie and Femi! Come on, Ben's in the opener. Sometimes it can be hard to like see how things really are when you're really going through it, and you're so focused on the negative. You've got to take a step back and look at things more objectively. We're in twelfth place. Like we're not doing badly at all. We've only had two losses in about seven games, and Femi, who's been given a nod today, starting up top in this one with Bukari taking a breather, has just. Bent in the opener. Reading in front, Aziz with the first. Five goals in 22 for Femi. You know, we said when we uh, we inherited a few of these Reading players that there's a couple that I'm really keen on. Tyler, of course, and, uh, and Femi as well. And Aziz has been great for us in League One, great for us in the Championship, and also here in the Premier League too, one of our better players as Ilya Grua tries his look. Oh, what a goal! The Bulgarian! Said I don't need to do any weightlifting, Doxy boy. Just let me take aim from range like a sniper. Wonderful finish from 23 yards. And Gruev gives us a second. Clips it in off the underside of the crossbar for one of the goals of the season. That is a clean strike from just outside the area. Well, you know, we often talk about stopping the rot, stemming the flow, and then building on it from there. That is exactly, oh, as Charlie Savage always put the icing on the cake, what the goal of straw away at Turf Moor did. Was it a return to any ways? No, but it was a clean sheet on the back of back-to-back -back losses, which stopped the rot, and then we could start to move forward, which we do here. Our first win in the calendar year, and it ends our winless run. 2-0 at home to Crystal Palace on McGree's day where he was quiet but that goal by Gruev man unbelievable strike goal of the season no doubt and one of our best wins of the season really important one too yeah certainly not going to count our chickens but I do feel quite confident that again two more wins because of how badly some teams have been this season will be all we need so let's see if we can get back to back wins for the first time in the calendar year following contest staying in the Bidesky, but West Ham Four points below us on the table and a golden chance to record our second win on the trot. Let's go do it and take a giant step towards safety. Come on, you Royals. I don't know who saw the Community Shield on Saturday afternoon, by the way. Thrilling ending to the game, of course. But uh, I was so pleased for Ekanji. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand. We said this before. Community Shield. Bit of a bit of a glorified friendly. It's not the competition that anyone really cares too much about. But I was really pleased for Ekanji, who was easy. Just beating all ends up here. And his strike is denied by Emil Ordera. Missing crucial penalties for club and country in the, uh, in the recent couple of years. Uh, featuring for, for Switzerland against England at the Euros, missing that penalty. The only one missed in the shootout, of course, as England made it for on the spot kicks. For him to have netted the winning penalty, that must have felt like redemption for him. You know, real, real redemption. And like we said, it's not it's not the most coveted of trophies. A wonderful build-up, and Aldero again makes the save. But psychologically, the penalty scored means so much to him, and I was pleased to see him bounce back and net one. 
uh, after what he'd been through recently from missing pens. Even so, a couple of great saves by Emil or Dairy Man. The Italian with two big ones early. Actually, I don't know why I just said he missed one for uh, for Man City when he he didn't. Um, I could I could swear he um, he took one in that Community Shield loss to Arsenal. But I just checked and he didn't, so never mind. But anyway, Harvey Nibs has his shot deflected and Femi is also denied by Ordero. Well, speaking of missing and saving right now, the Italian is on flames. Three great saves in the first half to keep it to 0-0. It's all Reading, man. This pressure's got to pay off at some point, but as for now, it hasn't. Oh, man, if we go a goal down here, this will be sickening, man. We've been on absolute... Oh, no, I don't believe it. <laughs> We've been in control since the first whistle. But this, and I say it all the time, this is what makes Olmert such a difficult difficulty to play on, man. You might need multiple chances to get a goal. The AID only need the one. Kudus with the only one, with the only goal thus far in the game. Incredible. How are we behind in this? Are we seriously going to lose this? This is incredible. It's going to be two. We definitely will lose it if we... Oh, I don't believe it. Deflection straight to Mads Vafer. And West Ham go tuning it up. 12 to go, and that is probably going to do it. Extraordinary. I, ca I cannot believe what I've seen in this game. Absolutely in control for the most part. Granted, mostly in the first half. We're going to lose 2-0. One of those games, man. Just chalk it up, man. Happens every now and then. One of those games. Chalk it up. Move on to the next one. Right, let's do one more. We'll end on this. Try and bounce back with a victory. We've been locked in 12th for most of the season now, I swear. But heading to this one, we could go into 11th with a win away against the side in 11th. It's Wolves at Molyneux. One win in seven in all competitions. Really poor run of form. So let's end the episode strong with a big three points on the road. Come on, you Royals. I think one thing's for sure as well. No matter where we end up finishing for the end of this season... So long as it's above the bottom three, which I still feel comfortable it will be as Haynes does well on Cunha. We're going to need a new striker. Two, two goals scored in our last seven games in all competitions. It's not going to cut it. We, we really like Bukhari, player of the season in the championship. But it's safe to say he hasn't quite, as his ears are burning. Oh, great save by Jose Sar, adapted to life at the top level. Yeah, I think, I think for the new season, if we do end up surviving, which I feel confident, touch wood, fingers crossed, we'll, uh, we'll be looking to invest most of our summer budget in a new Ford. Decided against it this year. Safe to say I made the wrong decision there. Well, I say wrong decision. To be fair, we didn't have much money to work with. As Garev hits it for him. As we fair, he'll win that. Bukhari. Oh, it's cool. Oh, no, he's in the post. Oh, that would have been the best way to answer your critics, man. Wonderful chip, but hits the woodwork. Oh, unlucky. Unlucky. This is not for the want of trying. He's still, he's still putting the effort in. As Dennis heads just over. How are we still trying at 0-0 here? Come on. Yes, creating, but not scoring. That is the Reading problem right now. Another game without a goal. Just one win in our last eight in all competitions. But as I always say, life is often about perspective. Granted, it's been a poor run with very few wins. But we're still well clear of the drop zone. And still have destiny firmly in our own hands. With 13 games to go and a 14-point gap. Just wish you could have brought in the back of the net a few more times. But that'll do it for today's episode of the Summer Career Mode, guys. So, big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I will return in the next one with the penultimate episode of Season 3. Where we'll probably play around 9 or 10 games in our remaining 13. Aim to surely secure top flight foot with, again, all I'd say necessary, a couple of wins. Hopefully, we'll do that in the next one. Have a fantastic day, guys. Much love. And I'll see you for the penultimate episode of Season 3. Very soon.